This is a special in-depth soul reading using both tarot cards and powerful intuitive messages from spirit to give you the clarity you need. Hello, hello, welcome. Today we have an especially powerful reading. We are doing an in-depth soul reading. So we're looking at things like path and purpose, perhaps life lessons, poignant things that have been happening in the past or may come up in the future. So I have a very unique kind of reading planned out for you guys. I'm so excited. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have some amazing crystals on the table to help elevate the energy of our reading today. And I have to say, in 14 years that I've been on YouTube, I have never done a sponsored anything. And today is that one exception. I'd like you to meet Stu. Now, Stu is just like you and me. He is doing his spiritual work, walking his path, fulfilling his purpose. And he offers these amazing crystals that have been ethically harvested. The companies that he works with, he goes and visits the sites. And when he brings the crystals home, he infuses them with Reiki. Wow. So on the table today, we have Moldavite, which is, this is genuine and authentic Moldavite. And I just want to point out that there are quite a few places that are actually selling glass. It's not even real Moldavite. And this is super powerful stuff because it is so good at helping with clearing emotional issues, clearing up old past traumas. You know, it elevates spiritual growth and consciousness. And he had sent me this. And this is in a body oil. And inside, look at this, you guys. It's even infused with a piece of moldavite inside and honestly <laughs> i'm i'm truly addicted i wasn't supposed to share this but it's made with all sweet oils and fragrances and i'm telling you it is i think the nicest natural mixture i have ever ever seen so if you want to get something as a treat for yourself i would suggest it's called Crystals and Reiki Third Eye Moldavite Oil. It's truly amazing. But these two big towers that are sitting on the table, they so complement our reading today. Because I know that we are aiming to go up high high as far as energies. And the important thing with that is that we are balancing that energy in being grounded. And with this one, this is a ruby and zostite tower and it stimulates passion, energy, enthusiasm, and but overall it's like general well-being, calmness, and that's the kind of energy that we want to be in when we're doing a soul reading. But this this one here, I couldn't I I was shocked that this is what he sent because this is very rare obicular and plume agate, which is this part of this tower. And he had these special made in Indonesia and the agate is set into this clear amethyst tower. It's super rare so you won't be finding this anywhere else and it's actually he has it on sale this week so the energy coming off of this thing is unbelievable so while it does promote you know harmony and stability it is very grounding and it connects into that mother earth gaia energy and that is so important when you're doing intuitive work. And I cannot express any of you guys who are into energy, 
are going to feel the power coming off of these crystals. Now I do have the link down in the pinned comments and the description. There's a code for you to get 15% off on your first order. And that will help me and help support the channel. And it will definitely benefit you in the incredible energy that these can bring to the table with whatever you are working on or working with. So for our pile choice today, I felt like we needed to use cards to do that. And if you're new to the channel, I am the author of three Oracle card decks that contain fractals. And this particular deck has no words on it. So it's really going to hone in intuitively. So you're going to go on the color, the pattern, whatever it is that resonates with you. And uh, for our group number one, we have Wisdom Guide. Okay. For choice number two, I need to go right in here. And we have the expansion card. No surprise there when you see the write-ups. That's hilarious. Oh my goodness. Okay. And the third. Wow. We have infinite love. Now, you can choose one pile, but you can also choose more than one. If two of these resonate with you, the first one, the strongest one, is primary soul information. The second pile that you watch is our secondary energies that are running within. So they aren't as potent as the first pick, but they're still playing out in your life. Okay, so you make your selection and I am going to get us started in the reading. Hi, group one. Okay. So we're going to start off with um, the intuitive hits that I was getting on you guys. And we're going to start with the very first thing that was coming in here um, is that there was this feeling of a stressed energy around your gifts. Um, and I put sharing, like sharing your gifts or sharing yourself in some way. Now, this is a group reading, so it's going to be a little bit different for each of you. But there was something about, um, it's either some sort of stress around um, using your gifts in a practical way out here in the world, or allowing people to see you or to, you know, the fear of sharing them in some sort of way, or even a, a, a fear or something else going on in the background that's kind of holding you back from really letting yourself be out here and to shine. So I don't know what's going on with that. It's going to be different for each of you. But what did come through here, okay, so I have this word trust circled because it seems like trust has come in so strongly here. And I feel like on one level, they are speaking about trust in other people, trusting, you know, that it takes a long time or quite a while for you guys to really build that level of trust in somebody to lower your guard. But the big part or the big hit with this trust was a trust in spirit or self. So it's almost like you have that feeling, that urge of stepping into your path, but then there's that hesitation that comes with it because you're not fully believing in your intuition, which is your connection to spirit. There's something going on there. So, um, so I'm not saying there's any issues with your intuition. It's just about in the area of sharing yourself or your gifts out in the world is where that hesitation and that I feel like stop, start, stop, start, or, you know, you kind of are inching your way very slowly towards that. And so I wrote the word core because it feels like it's a very much a core issue and it's issue. This has happened in different areas of your life as well. It will not be in this, but I feel like this trust thing is also feeding into 
maybe not as much confidence in yourself or belief in yourself. You know, there seems to be this feeling or flavor of being able to recognize and genuinely appreciate the gifts and expressions of anybody else around you. But when it comes to you, I feel like I feel like there might be some comparison going on here or feeling like you don't compare as well as that person. And if I do do it, you know the full gambit, right? Of how this can express itself. So I don't want to go on too much about that. But I feel like as a, because this is a soul reading, that these are real core lessons and learning that you are experiencing in this life is about trust, believing in yourself, trusting your intuition, trusting your heart, and having confidence in yourself. And what came through here, I put quick learner. And what I mean by that is it seems that if there's something that catches your interest, that you have an ability to pick it up quite quickly, more so than the general or other people might do that. And there's not just quick learner, but like this ability to self-teach, you know, that that you don't need to go into a classroom and have official uh, training on things that you're more in that self taught and I I'm getting that this is more like I'm remembering I feel like you guys have a lot of tools and gifts or skills abilities that you have carried this low-key remembrance from previous lives or previous experiences so that when you come on to you know new things in this lifetime that perhaps it isn't really all that new. And this one was funny. It was <laughs> sometimes things, you know, intuitively come through these symbols in a very strange way. And I literally saw fireflies and I'm like, holy smokes. Okay, so that's a new one. Um, but these fireflies, I felt like that that was representing you guys as a group, that you are like these fireflies who are meant to go out there in the world and light it up in some way. It's like lighting up other people's lives. And so there was very much an element of like service that was coming through with this. And it could be any kind of service, but that there was service and a lightning, like you make people's lives better. You make their day better in coming in contact with you. Yes, you can have bad days and, you know, not be the brightest light out there. But in general, the truth of you guys as a soul is that you are these brilliant, beautiful lights that are meant to aid, to help, to brighten people's lives and worlds in service in some way. Now, that's what I got as far as intuitive hits, if you will. And the card that you guys chose was the Wisdom Guide card. And this says that you guys are cosmically tapped in, that you have this wealth of information, wisdom, and knowledge to share. And this card has come out quite a few times in the last, I would say, two months. And that's interesting. So there's something in this that there's a message here that if you've been watching previous videos... There's something here for you guys to embrace that this is a part of your path and your calling as a soul. Okay, I'm just going to get out the charms. We'll get our charms. It's going to be loud, sorry, but we're just doing one, two, three, four. Okay, now, wow. Okay, so we have a baby deer. We have a spider web. This is a lock and a cat. Okay. So I just want to point out that that deer energy is predominantly love. And it came out last week as an animal uh, totem spirit card, and it's come out again. So if you've gotten this twice, there's something about 
Um, like that's where I feel that service energy is coming out and where we, where I was speaking about this trust in people, you know, having these harder lessons about how to trust people. That's what that deer is representing, but it's also that expression of your love through service that it's speaking about. Now with the cat, Kitty cat is very feminine and, you know, so she's going to represent all the things of the divine feminine, which is service, absolutely. But it's also intuition, which goes very well with our wisdom guide card, counseling, healing, nurturing, all of that area of helping our fellow man to thrive and evolve. Now, what's cute is we have our little spider web and spider, there is a spider actually sitting on it. And spider is the alphabet weaver. So there is the element of communication, which I feel is backing up what I was saying, this hesitation of sharing yourself, your gifts, out here in the world, um, a fear of communicating or expressing yourself in a very authentic way. And there could also be things where um, this might actually come into relationship areas as well with maybe not wanting to speak your truth about what is going on for you and just wanting to keep peace and things like that but that your expression is so important and there will be big lessons or has been for you guys in your lifetime. Now, what's funny is that little lock is kind of the lockdown that I was feeling was happening here. Now, don't get me wrong because I know that many of you have been doing your growth work and you've been working at um, really overcoming the challenges that you've faced in your life in order to really be this expression of yourself out here in the world. But there is still parts of yourself that are on lockdown, that are still waiting for you to beam your light out into this world. So that's quite interesting. Okay, so we're going to do a, a layout that I have developed for myself there's one of our cards. Okay, and that's going right up here in the, oh, there's two. Okay, so I'm going to take the first one is going, faith. Oh my goodness. So that is faith and trust. Exactly. They're doing it again. I love it. Okay, and we have violet flame. Oh my goodness. I am getting excited here. Okay, just a minute. Let's get out the rest of our cards here. We need two more. And this one here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. I'm sorry I'm repeating myself, but, and I feel like this one might be it here. Up. Okay. So, so where that wisdom guide is representing you guys as a soul group, it's saying that, you know, you are these wise beings who have come here, incarnated in here to bring forth this wisdom. And it could be ancient wisdom, celestial wisdom. I mean, it can be, there's, you know, how many different groups and types of wisdom that there is. And it doesn't mean just intuitively, because a lot of the times this kind of thing is operating as already operating in the background. We use it so naturally that we don't even realize it or give it the kind of credit that it deserves. But you really are, you guys are like these Yodas all incarnated here in this body in to bring that into service in some way. And so the card that sits at the top, if that's you, this card represents higher lessons and learning. And that is why I went, oh my goodness, because we have the faith card, which is exactly what I was saying 
that there's this issue around trust, really having faith in yourself. And so the faith card talks about not only having faith in spirit, but more importantly, having faith in yourself. So I don't want to sound like a broken record, but boy, is spirit pounding it home for you guys today about really trusting yourselves and trusting your gifts and trusting what it is that you have to bring and share out here in the world. And you know what? I've as I did that, I felt my um, my lapis. And this is another thing that Stu had given me. And he picked it out for me intuitively. And it is perfect because lapis is so good with helping with not just intuition, third eye and throat chakra, but like communicating and things like that. And that's an area that I really need support in in really sharing the things that I have to share so um that's what the lapis is and I feel like that just goes so well with your reading here today because it's about you expressing yourself authentically out in the world so if this is spiritual lessons and learning this row down here represents the foundation that your two feet stand on that give you stability during this lifetime. And we have the violet flame, like whole lay smokes. And that's what I had said to you. Like, I feel like a lot of you guys are doing your work, right? Your own personal growth work. And that violet flame, um, there is ty um, different types of healing modalities that involve the violet flame but in general it is talking about your healing so that tells me that that for you guys it is always going to be important that some part of your focus or your mind is always on um, doing your emotional growth work your personal growth work your spiritual growth work that you're always looking at and assessing yourself and that it tells me that there's things because this is in the physical that there's things that have come up in your lifetime that have involved you ne needing to get deeply involved in your own healing or healing with others so that can be physical healing healing physical issues or emotional and spiritual issues because it's a group reading, it's going to be hard to really hone in on which that that is. But that's funny because I have the Moldavite and the Moldavite um, oil. And that Moldavite is very much about helping to assist with emotional healing and healing past traumas. And that's the foundation that gives you guys the stability. So no coincidence that this amazing ancient piece of Moldavite is sitting on the table. Thank you, Stu. <laughs> He's just as intuitive, I'm telling you. Um, so if that's what you're learning in your incarnation and for spiritual higher lessons and learning, this is the energy that you have recently been sitting in, okay? Now, this is the take flight card, and that is what why all of this has come up in your reading today, because that take flight card is saying that there's this calling, this yearning, like there's no way that you guys in this group have gotten to where you are in your life right now without feeling that feeling that you are called to something more, to something greater, to being your greatness and that's what this is it's talking about that yearning in your heart to really do something that actually matters out here in the world and this is a very social card um these chain links that are in this butterfly represent our connecting to other people and it's saying, like, this flower represents spirit. 
if you will. And that's what the butterfly feeds on. It's what nourishes the butterfly to put its light out here into the world. And I cannot think of anything more profound or accurate for you guys in this soul reading. Now, how do we get from where you are to where you're going? So this card acts like the bridge, if you will, to get you from where you are to where you need to be. And it's, that's the one right there, shifting. <laughs> Spirit has a sense of humor, don't you think? Oh my goodness. Okay, so we have the shifting card. Now, that card is saying that things are in a shift and that that energy of shifting has come up in the last few weeks quite strongly. So I'm not surprised that they're talking about it again. But my feeling with this card is like in general, the, this card is talking about um, that as you're making this transition into a new way of being or thinking and expressing yourself, that the ground can feel a little bit unsteady because it's so new, right? You're transitioning from one type of terrain to a new terrain, if you want to put it that way. So that's, you know, spirit is saying, be okay with things feeling a little bit unstable or feeling like you're not entirely sure it's okay. But the other energy that I am getting with this card is that there's a lot to do with you guys in making the absolute decision. Just saying, you know what? Forget it. I'm just going to do it. I've had enough of this holding me back. I've had enough not doing what's calling in my heart. I, I'm tired of feeling depressed because I'm not being this authentic expression and I'm just going to do it. And so I'm, what I'm saying is I feel like there's choice, your choice, choosing to do it. And what's amazing is that it brings us to this. This is kind of like outcome, if you will, or where things are heading with this. And we have the up card, like, oh my goodness, you guys, that is a card of success. It's a card of accomplishment. It's like uplifting for you guys in your life, in your self-esteem, in your confidence, belief and trust and up in your faith in yourself. Like it's in every way. And this is where this sounds almost cliche and I don't mean it that way, but in trusting this process this is one of your big soul lessons in this lifetime. And when you really let go and follow that calling in your heart, things will work out for you. Even if you feel like it has not in the past, there was something not quite in alignment for you back then. Now it is. Things are shifting to the proper alignment. So I'm asking you to please trust what has come through in this reading. They're trying to prove to you that they really are running this reading, okay? Now, I'm just going to move these out of the way, and we are going to get our cards out. Now, I'm going to shuffle these just a little bit, and let's spread these out. Okay, Spirit soul reading for group one. What do they need to know about? What do they need to hear? Third chakra. <laughs> okay. Third chakra is all about your power, empowerment, confidence, belief, that sort of thing. And that's kind of it. They're saying that through this journey that you're going through right now, it is bringing you into a place, a much more balanced place where your energy is running through that 
a true confidence, not an arrogant confidence of the mind, but uh, from a true sense of empowerment, okay? And, um, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling drawn down into this. I'm going to take that one. Romantic love. Ooh, okay. So I was not expecting that card to come out. <laughs> now, we have 3 and 43 showing up in here. So there is that Holy Trinity energy. And I feel like with that romantic love, I mean, it can be like, you know, that is saying that there's that element of you guys finding more stability when you are in relationship or feeling when you're in healthy relationship, you have more stability. But I do want to say that I feel like I want to almost take off the word romantic and just put love because that's a part of what I was talking about here in your write-up was about that, you know, shining your light and love out here in the world. But I feel like it's through your connections with people that really helps to ground you. That's funny. That's probably why we have this, this obicular and plume agate here because this one is so grounding and this is the energy that you guys need this grounding and bringing you right here into your body into earth I feel so I I do feel like spirits saying whatever has gone on in the past as far as relationships there is a healing that over your lifetime that will come for you so that you have that stability and empowerment in your relationships as well, not just in your path and purpose, because this is a reading as a soul in general, right? So they're saying relationships have been an issue and that there's healing coming with that. Now, I want to see what we've got here. Okay, Spirit, what does group one need to know for their soul reading? Life, path, purpose, friends, love. Give it to us. Wow. Okay. We have the high priestess. Now, no surprise, we have another cat showing up because she is right here under our charms, our little kitty cat. So again, spirit is doing whatever they can to like really back up what they're saying to really drive it home. Um, and no, nope, I'm up here. And we'll take this one. Whoops. Nine of egg corns. Another cat. What? Oh my God. Wow. Okay. So definitely the feline energy is a theme for you guys. Now, look at this. Intuition, sacred knowledge. And under here, we have the wisdom guide. Sacred knowledge, wisdom guide. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's it. This card, really, I do. I feel like it represents you. And the thing with that high priestess is she is the empowered embodiment of that feminine divine energy. And it's no coincidence that she came out right under this, this third chakra card, the solar plexus. This is a total complete empowerment of you guys within your spiritual gifts because intuition it doesn't just mean that oh you guys are all here to be intuitive readers I, it's not like that but to really follow that intuitive guidance in your lives and for yourselves but to also come into that true um, embodiment of your divinity as an expression out here in the world and then we have the nine of acorns like holy smokes and here we go look at that guys the word power and you know it does the nine of acorns really does represent perseverance it is the ability to weather 
any storm, to stick through it no matter what. And I know that there have been times where you guys are like, that's enough. I want to throw in the towel. I don't want to do this anymore. You know, beam me up, Scotty. Get me out of here. I hear you. I truly do. But, you know, your soul still has things to do here. It still has work to accomplish. And you are here to be in service to the world. There are souls that need you and need you in that place of empowerment. And it will come through your journey of cleaning your gifts. It's not the power, empowerment will come first or the confidence comes first. Then you do your gifts. You gain your confidence, your trust and faith in your gifts, spirit and yourself through walking your path and utilizing and using your gifts. That's where it comes. Okay, we are still not done. Now, I also have these dice. They're astrological dice. And I just want to get a read or a feel on um, what astrological energies are working in with you in this reading to help you on your path and purpose. Okay, so we have the sign of Cancer and we have Uranus. So no surprise, Cancer is the moon. She is the ultimate. She would be the expression of the divine feminine if there were one. <laughs> She's ruled by the moon. Intuitions, emotion, family, nurturing, caring, my goodness. She is everything that these two kitty cats represent. And then Uranus, I love that because Uranus, well, a lot of people say, oh, Neptune is the spiritual planet. Yes, it's spiritual, but boy, does Neptune pack a punch as far as intuition because Neptune is outside of the norm. And people who have strong, not, not Neptune, Uranus, and people who have strong Uranus in their chart tend to be quite intuitive and like, brilliant minded and so there's something about that breaking away breaking free kind of energy that Uranus represents and I feel like that's what the is this energy is what's uh, the impetus to creating this shift and new choices that are coming in here for you guys so okay so I'm just getting out another dice I just want some sort of time period here, but I'm feeling this is sooner than later. If you aren't already in this shift, it's happening relatively quickly, but I just want to see what they have to say. 10. So within 10 weeks, that makes sense because that would be within two, two and a half months, 10 weeks. So Oh, I, I'm going to say over the next two, two and a half months, this shifting is coming in here. Okay, so I have my little bag of quotes here. Let's see what spirit chose for you guys. Nothing is impossible. The word itself says, I'm possible. <laughs> okay, we'll put our beautiful little Moldavite there. Okay. Spirit definitely has a sense of humor this week. But I really want you guys to feel encouraged, especially when it comes to your path and purpose. Now, if you are not subscribed, I strongly suggest you subscribe because every week we do something a little bit different, but always amazing and always from the heart. Now remember to look down in the description and in the pinned comments for the link to Stu's website and get yourself some amazing crystals and look for the coupon code to get 15% off. It's right down there. As always, you guys know I love you. Mwah. I cannot wait to see you again next week. Take care. Hi, group two. Okay, let's get started into our reading.
<sighs> We're going to start with our intuitive notes here. So the very first thing that came in was this feeling of an extended hand. And it's come in once or twice in after, like private readings, but it was the feeling of like, you guys are the group who need to reach out and take whoever and as many as you can and uplift them with yourselves that you are on this path of elevation, like spiritual elevation, personally, um, you know, like as in personal growth work, and emotionally. And it's like, if I am going to um, raise myself to this higher consciousness or higher understanding or higher knowledge, whichever it is for you guys, I feel like you guys are like, I'm going to take as many people as I can with me. That's the feeling that came in here. And that's why there's so many lines. <laughs> um, now, it seemed to me uh, there was this feeling of lessons around your power. And I feel like these are lessons that you guys would have learned or maybe the word experienced um, about your own personal sense of power, having it challenged in the world or coming up to people or authorities who maybe didn't use their, their position of power in a ethical way, in perhaps the way that they should, because I feel like there's a clashing or coming to heads somehow with power outside of yourself in your lifetime and then this these lessons around how to step into your own power but um, because of what you've experienced it's about how do I step into my power in a way that um, not it's not just about being authentically there but to be there in a way that is healthy and balanced as in leadership not dictatorship, you know, and I feel like these have happened, these lessons have happened in many ways for you guys over the years, and there is a coming into balance with that and really owning your power, and so yes, I feel like there's been quite a few challenges in that area, and what's interesting is I, I, I wrote thick skinned and then the not and because I get the feeling with you guys that the way that you present as souls, the, however you were wired when you got in here, you can, you can exude or have this outer shell or of confidence or or appear to others like you're thick skinned, things don't bother you. Um, this is people's perception, okay? That's what I'm talking about here. But that you guys aren't actually that way, that you're very sensitive, you're very sensitive to energies, you're very sensitive maybe to the subtle um, um energies that other people are putting off because you guys are the the people 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 <laughs> in this in this reading this week and I feel that you're much more sensitive to what people say and do than you appear to be and because of that perhaps people um misunderstood you or treated you in ways that they thought maybe it wasn't completely inappropriate treatment. They just thought, oh, you can take it because you're you and you're tough. And and you're like, these things, like I, I feel like it hits me right in the heart. And so again, it's that these lessons on the extremes of things. And so there's been a little bit of a pullback or a tucking in with your energy, almost like, uh, I, I feel like I want to say like warrior-esque. You guys have this warrior-ish kind of energy here. 
and um but it's not to um confront or take on this warrior risk it's to continue on and to carry on there's a big difference because the other thing that came in here this is a peace symbol and this is how a peace symbol is supposed to be everything in our realm has been inverted on purpose to reduce the energy and power of the truth of what the symbols re um, represent. And so this is a peace sign. And I feel like this is one of those things that you thirst for in your life is that sense of peace and contentment. And again, I feel with you guys, it's like, where can I find that peace where can I find that place where I can relax my soul and just be and just be me happily and contentedly? But I, I feel like there's also something important here that um, it's not okay for you guys um, when you're around maybe people who are arguing or there's contention in the room. You're not okay with it. It doesn't sit well with you. you know, you know some people can... Um, watch two people argue and they're sitting there smiling the whole time. That is certainly not you guys. And you would be more likely to either um, remove yourself from the situation or try to mediate the situation to bring about peace. So there's, there is that peacekeeper warrior energy that's so strong here with you guys. And what's interesting is that I, I wrote belonging, tribe, your own tribe. So it's not that I feel like, well, for some of you, you might feel like you don't belong here in this realm at all. That could very well be. I mean, this is a group reading, right? But I felt like there was this calling inside of you that's kind of like, where is my tribe? Where are my people? Where are, where is my group? Where is the energy that I kind of belong to? And then I, I put this line and then your own, because I felt for many of you, you guys have such, such a leadership energy in here that it feels to me that, um, the searching outside for that tribe or that place, if we want to put it that way, is is a part of your soul calling to create your own tribe to that through doing your work you call in you you attract the souls who are at the same level of energy frequency love understanding awareness and that that for many or if not most of you it's about creating your tribe, bringing your tribe together. You know, you, you guys are like a lighthouse shining that light out there and the ships come sailing into you. <laughs> kind of like that is the energy that I get with you. And that's why this, don't get stuck with the word educator. Um, but the that word, I feel like it's the conveyor of knowledge of information, of, and I put awakening. So I don't want you to think, oh, this is a reading for people who are teacher souls. Kind of yes, but no, that's not what I mean. With that, I mean, you could be a singer and a songwriter, but you would write songs that are um, bringing a higher awareness to people and the world. Like, I feel like a lot of you guys would be the truth seekers, um, revealing truths about our world, our reality, about spiritual um, principles, functions, and understandings, and doing this in your very own unique, unique way. But like I said, that, that brings me back to this extended hand, that in whatever way you are thriving and, and and are called to um, um, evolve in your own in your own life as a soul. You are also called 
to bring that same level of elevation with other people in each in your own unique way it's very powerful with you guys i have to say like wow okay so let's move this over here oh i forgot our card oh my goodness silly me so that's our expansion card that group goes with group number two okay and i found this to be quite interesting and that's why when i pulled the card earlier i giggled because this is all about being in a leadership position being a person who is meant to be working with other people and this came out recently already and so if you are getting this again over the last few weeks, you're getting it again today. Spirit is trying to drive that message home that you truly are intended to be working with groups of people to be in that leadership kind of role to lead the troops to a better place, a higher place of love and understanding in whatever area that is your specialty. Now, I'm just going to get out our charms, and it might be a bit loud, but I'm just, I want four. So let's go one, two, three, four. Okay, so what do we have here? Wow. Okay, we have a bat. We have a book. Like, I feel like that book really goes along with that educator, awakener, sort of energy it really is bringing that knowledge wisdom understanding whatnot to other people and so there's probably been some serious study on your part in some sort of area where that is your specialty but generally you guys absorb you guys are the absorbers of knowledge wisdom and information to me, that's representing the passion, you know, when you give a dog a bone to chew on, so to speak. It's like you guys need these, this purpose or areas in your life that you specialize in, that you hone in on, and you stick with it. You, you guys are not the quitters here. You dive really deep into whatever it is you're doing. And this is like the treat. And I feel like this is what you are sharing in some sort of way is that giving other people this information, this bone to chew on. Here, you guys, here, chew on this for a while. And then broop, out comes this profound truth or insight or wisdom or knowledge <laughs> that you're giving. And we have interesting that we have two winged creatures here so we have both the hummingbird and the bat now the bat represents change so what that's saying is things you're not the type of people or in your life to have this one long term you know steady anything there's always this is always transforming things are always transforming into something new something new is happening and unfolding and what's interesting is in the tarot deck that I'm going to use today, this bat, there's a bat on one of the cards, and the meaning talks about appearing to be thick-skinned when you aren't, and I literally wrote thick-skinned here. And so, you know, so where the bat represents change and with the tarot card being thick-skinned, um, the hummingbird, to me, that's actually bringing in that warriorish energy. And I know you're thinking, what? But, you know, the hummingbird has been known to chase away eagles. True story. So, you know, you have this eagle, which you perceive as this powerful um, animal. And this beautiful, gentle little hummingbird can out fly it, outmaneuver it, and scare it off. So when we're talking about lessons around power, nothing could fit the story of what, what is coming through here better than the hummingbird. So that's 
pretty amazing. That's amazing stuff. And I feel like that really does represent you guys. You are this amazing, beautiful, fluttering creature. And uh, who's very much empowered and empowering others. So let's see. Okay, group two spirit. For their soul reading, what does group two soul reading, what do they need to hear? Oh my goodness, you see that? Power, power, I pulled the power card. That. <laughs> Crazy, even as I'm saying it, the, the card comes, you saw me shuffle, and that's all I can say. Um, and this is down below. We have the rejuvenation. Yeah. Okay. That completely makes sense. I'm going over here for this one. Birthing. Yes. And I feel like I'm still down in here somewhere. Okay. Spirit. Where is it? The one right under my finger. Oh, feline. Excellent. Okay. Sorry. I get so excited. I'm so passionate about this. And I love how spirit just puts it together, you know? So this card represents you and I'm doing a spread that I kind of developed for myself over a hundred years of doing readings. So if that represents you as a soul in this soul reading, this card up here represents higher lessons, higher learning, and that sort of thing. Now it's interesting. Um, Stu had sent me this lapis, which is really good for throat communication, like throat and third eye, intuitive communication and stuff. And I, I, he's so intuitive. It couldn't be any more appropriate for what I'm doing. And I really do feel like spirit has upped the ante. So I know I can't say like rely on crystals, but I, I have to say, I, I question whether this has helped amplify this reading in some way. I don't know. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments below. So with that power card, I mean, I feel like I'm going to be a broken record if I go over the lessons around power that you guys have had. Um, but because it actually came into the higher realm, and if you look at the other videos, I, the first card I pull goes to the top each each time. So I'm not doing this just to make the reading. I don't do that. Um, it says that this is one of the things that you as a soul have incarnated here to learn and that it is going to be involved with relationships from the time you were young and probably till the, you're finished with this skin suit and shed it, right? But um, that it also says that you do evolve in your understanding of power, of your own empowerment, and the empowerment of others. And that through this educator, awakener kind of thing, you guys aren't here just to learn lessons around your own power, but that there's this soul thing in elevating people into their own empowerment. Very power, very powerful stuff. I, I didn't mean that as a pun, but it just came out that way. Um, so the, if this is on the higher learning soul lessons area, this card represents the foundation like here in the physical world of incarnation and it's kind of interesting that spirit chose a spiral because everything expansion evolution that's what spirals represent and that rejuvenation card i feel is talking about the rejuvenation of your own power but through your life's lives ugh, sorry i feel like what i was saying like this um trans everything transforming in these stages and this cyclic rejuvenation rebuilding cycle that's going on here but I feel like
because this is so much about power, it's not just about power, it's also about energy, how I use my energy, what I do with my energy. So a lot of you could even be energy workers or have a high energy impact on other people. And that's what that rejuvenation card is about, that that's where your two feet stand on. It gives you the stability to walk through your lives is in your own process of healing and renewal the renewing of everything in this cyclic, I feel it's cyclic kind of pattern happening here. So this card actually represents the energy that you are in right now. And we have the birthing card. Now this card is it's talking about having something within you that you are gestating or ready to give birth to. And so this could be a business. It could be, um, you know, some sort of whatever. I have no idea because it's a group reading. I cannot hone into it. But there's something that you guys have that you are getting ready to give birth to out here in the world as far as your life, your path, your purpose, and that sort of thing. And with this card, it does say that it's important that you not rush the process, okay? Because whatever you are, I, I feel like I want to use the word developing, whatever you are developing here. It needs the time and patience to come fully in, not just in concept and idea, but how you are going to deliver that out in the world to other people, how you're going to share it in whatever way that you do. So one of the analogies that I like to use is, you know, this that you are giving birth to is like a baby for you. And you want to make sure that you guys have a big, fat, juicy, healthy baby. You don't want a premature baby that you've rushed out into the world out of impatience or, you know, this need to hurry things along, that it's important to trust the divine timing and the slower process. Because you guys are that warrior energy, you have more of a push to your energy and I feel like that's what spirit's talking about. So how do we get from here to here, from this place of this concept or something that is living inside of you and to bring it out into the world? So we need the bridge that's in here. So spirit, what is the bridge for group two? What is the bridge that there, there it is. Assistance. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay. I want to go back to that warrior-esque kind of energy with you guys. You know, that leadership, one of the, I mean, there's a lot of pros to being that kind of an energy and that kind of a soul. However, one of the cons is that you tend not to accept help from other people. You're less hesitant to take help or feel like nobody could do it as good as I can and all of the things that kind of go on in our minds. But this is saying to allow other people to help you in the process wherever you can, okay? To relinquish control in, to allow yourself to delegate in some sort of way. However, I also feel like this is talking up on a spiritual level too, that there is higher realms of energy beings, if you want to put it that way, who can assist in this process with you in bringing this out into the world. And what's interesting is, you know, because this is a soul reading, they're saying that all of you guys have this to something to put out here in the world and to allow other people in your life and in your world to help you to do that, that you aren't one lone wolf running the show, that you are the pack leader 
in the pack. So allow the pack to help you. Okay. And this is general, in general, lifelong, what they're talking about here. And then we have the feline card. And I'm sure you can see in this fractal that there's, it almost looks like a cat in here. And this cat is talking about a big leap forward. She's talking about success. So she said, like in the write-up, it talks about this cat who's in the grass. And, you know, when they nestle down the cat and their bum is wiggling and they've got their eye on the prize and they wait, they patient, they're patient. They wait till the exact right time. And then the cat pounces onto whatever it's trying to get. And that patience with it is exactly goes right along with that birthing card. So I have to, we should put patience on the list along with the power. Um, but this says that this isn't just, this isn't just a little leap forward. This is talking about a big leap forward. So there is great success with whatever this is that you do or eventually end up doing out here in the world. And, you know, it takes a lot to trust that, but, um, you know, you're going to have to trust yourselves and what you're doing and what you feel called to do here. And when you do it, uh, it will be more successful more quickly than you probably um, realize at this time. Now, I just want to spread them out. Okay, Spirit Group 3. What else do they need to know about their lives as a soul fifth chakra? Oh my goodness, that's so funny. I mean, I was talking about the lapis in the beginning and that it, it's for the throat and third eye and that you guys are here to share that. And you guys are the educators, the wisdom, the people. You're here to be lead these packs. And it's all about your expression. You guys need some lapis. My goodness. Um, and uh, no, it's down here. Where are we going, spirit? Down in here. That's the one. And attraction. Okay. So. Okay. So the fifth chakra, you guys know, it's all about your expression. It's all about speaking your truth. And I feel like I want to say, because you guys are in the educator, awakener kind of energy of what you're here to do, that it's really important that you guys are allowing yourselves to speak the truths that you know are here in this world, whether you believe that people out there are going to resonate with it or not. So, you know, that is a big part of you guys coming into this power empowerment is going to be through that throat chakra. Okay. So I wouldn't doubt that a lot of you end up getting choked up in here when you're holding with holding energy you feel it in here <laughs> like that um the other card we have here is attraction and okay yes it could be physical attraction but watch this look what this card says down here to um amplifies the qualities that attract and support us on our journey towards inner balance and harmony but that support us on our path. And I feel like this is a clue or a hint about you as you step into your role that your energy does. Like I was saying about um, your tribe. I can't. Like I was saying about your tribe, about you guys attracting your tribe through you being you through your expression. And I feel like they are talking about that here. And that is 
what is bringing in these people who assist you. So, but I also feel like it is saying on some level that you guys are quite the manifestors. You're quite good at not just law of attraction, but like the spiritual laws in general, the 12 spiritual laws, and that the the power of attraction, the power of assumption, all of those things, the laws of those. Um, so if you are not into manifesting, I strongly suggest you, you begin to study that because as a soul, this is a big part of who you are. Energy, power, attraction, symbolically and literally. So let's see. We're going to get out our tarot here. Okay, spirit, what else do they need to know about themselves as souls for their soul reading? That one right there is jumping up out, out of me. The queen of crystals. Aw. Okay. Awesome. Hold on a second, and we are going to get one more card here. It's right, I think that's the one. And we have the Queen of Egg Corns. Oh, look at that. Excellent. Okay. Okay. So I feel like I should actually switch these guys around. I'm going to put the Queen under our attraction, and you'll like see why in a second. But you got two Queens, I have to say. So Queen of Acorns is the same of Queen of Wands. And with this energy, it is huge determination that comes along with this. But not only that, it is about leadership. Honest to goodness. It's about leading people to higher ground. That's kind of what this is representing here in this image. So it also encompasses a lot of um, creative and intuitive, which I feel really does go along with everything I was saying there, because you are that intuitive, creative soul who sees things in a different light to awaken other people. You're tapped in, tuned in to higher things. But the fact that this is about leadership, just that is blows me away. It totally blows me away. And the Queen of Crystals, she is a lot more about security and comfort and even stability, if you want to put it that way. And that has everything, everything to do with manifesting that I was talking about here with this card. And that's why I felt we should switch it. So I really do want to say that the manifesting having that security piece comfort, you know, in your lives is one of these things as a soul that you are here to experience. And if you aren't experiencing that yet, it's just because you haven't yet hit that place, that marker for your soul at that point, where you really come into your own empowerment as far as what you manifest and stepping into your truth of bringing forth what you have to bring forth which is that huge successful leap forward that's right here in the cards. Now, I just want to get out our dice because the first one I want to roll is how long between this process of what you have and bringing it out into the world, okay? So what kind of timeline are we looking at, Spirit? We've got... O2. Okay. I feel like they're talking about the next two years. Within the next two years. Now, that can be a shorter time for some of you because it's a group reading. So they're kind of, we're looking at averages here, but we have O2. So I feel like they're talking within two years, you'll be from this place where you actually put it out in the world and have this huge leap forward of success but as a soul what energies these are astrological dice 
So what energies is group two working with? Oh, good. Oh, lovely. So we have Taurus and Saturn. Okay, this is really hilarious now because this is exactly everything that your reading is about. Okay, so Taurus is ruled by Venus. Taurus is all about comfort. I'm just going to move Saturn over here for a second. Ta uh, Taurus is all about comfort, security, that sort of thing. Um, financial, very connected to the earth, Taurus is, and determined. Taurus is very, you know, they are a bull, right? They will move forward like that. That is that same kind of energy that's coming through with this attraction and the Queen of Crystals card. So they are backing it up again, that as a soul, you are here to experience those creature comforts. So if you have not experienced that yet, I feel like for many of you, you will have experienced the opposite to give you the drive and impetus to move toward having and obtaining that. Okay. Now the Saturn, I'm moving Saturn over here because Saturn is all about, if they call, Saturn is father time. Saturn rules time. And so where Saturn shows up in the chart, things kind of tend to slow down. And I feel like that's backing up this patience part of your reading. However, Saturn is the authority. They are the leadership. They are all of those. They are the, the masculine figurehead. So it's a beautiful balancing of this feminine masculine energy that you have coming through here with these queens into this masculine power energy. So this Saturn is really representing you coming not into your power, but into that place of leadership and being the authority that you have are born to be. Okay, now we're not quite done. We have one more thing here. Let's dig out. These are, I have a big bag full of quotes and I'm just trying to get one out here. Is that just one? Yeah, okay. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. Oh, wow. How beautiful is that? I don't think that could sum it up any better. And I feel like they really are talking about you doing your thing out here in the world, right? This was a pretty amazing reading. I have to say, if you enjoyed your reading, please do sprinkle some love on the like button for me. I would appreciate it. And if you aren't subscribed, you should subscribe because I have lots more of amazing readings and you never know what I'm going to do from one week to the next. And please be sure to go visit Stu at reikiandcrystals.uk. Um, the links are down in the comments section. He has amazing products and he's working from genuine sincerity of wanting to help and aid others on their path here. And as always, you guys know I love you. I can't wait to see you again next week. Mwah. Take care. Hi, group three. Okay, so let's start with the intuitive write-up first. When I was tuning into your energy, you guys are very unique, very unique. So I wrote, new, unique, original, outside, that's supposed to say box. Looks like boy, but it's box. Um, there's, you guys are the originals, you know, um, you're not meant to be like everybody else. And there is this original thinking, original way of being. And I feel like in some ways you wish you that you fit in better so that you didn't stick out, whether that's, uh, you know, visually or um, through your energy and or through your thinking in the way that you perceive the world. Yeah, others are like, huh? 
<laughs> it's kind of like that, but it is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And I did write the word zany because I feel like there's this really beautiful lightness, this playfulness with you guys. But with being this original thinker, I feel like it's that the way that you guys perceive the world is not like everybody else. You see in it things that others cannot. And your approach to things is is also very unique. It's very different in some way. And I put from old to new transformers because I feel like you guys are, it's almost like there's these like traditional principles, ways, or ideas and you guys are the ones that are like here to innovate, to to take these and elevate them in some way to a new expression or a new way of approaching things. There's a trans, you guys are like transformers to change how we understand certain things. And that's why it says old to new, to take these concepts and and I feel like I'm not even hitting the mark with my words compared to how the energy feels so I apologize I'm doing my best to describe something that's very abstract but it's almost like taking these old things and making them new whether it's you know for example like maybe our understanding of the chakras and bringing that up into our current day reality and understanding with this unique original perception that you guys have and adding something new to it in some sort of way. But it's going to be different for each of you and your areas of specialty are also going to be different and unique. But I feel like you guys, you blanket this entire realm in every area so you have varied skills and abilities and um, interests, right? But the base of this is where you guys are operating from. So it gives me that feeling like I put creation of because there is that, like I want to I want to say that innovative energy and it's creating new things bring new, new, new. That's like, I have it everywhere. And it's the creation of something new in this realm, in this world. But there's a massive inspiration because I feel like you guys are the ones who inspire other people through what you do. That you have this, you guys are like the gas lamps and when your light turns on, you kind of ignite the passion in other people too. You're, you're an awakener, but in a completely different way. And I feel like you guys ride on waves of inspiration too. And I do mean waves. I get a lot of this wave energy with you guys. And that's why I, I wrote this kind of high, low, up and down and I feel like these are big waves so you guys can go really high for a while and then as high as you can go is as low as you can sometimes end up dropping right so you can go from high energy and output to complete downtime retreat recoup and then back out again so it's this cyclic kind of energy here but I feel like that plays for some of you, that might be in the realm of like um, how you feel mentally or emotionally, whether you, um, you know, maybe that manifests as depression or the inspiration itself or in, in any kind of way where you're getting these big waves because I feel it comes on, recoup, regenerate, come back on, like it's it's an amazing energy to sit in this energy with you guys. Um, but one of the things that really came through with you guys as a group was there's some sort of lesson or learning on how, for you, 
how to stay connected to your inner source of inspiration, spiritual connection, this, when you are, regardless of where you are in your wave, there's something about kind of almost feeling cut off in a way when you, when you're hitting low, there's something about being able to really stay connected into this creative, intuitive, spiritual force, no matter where you are in this wave sort of thing. Now, this is going to become more clear as we um, go through your reading. Now, I'm just going to turn this around. And so card that came out for you guys was the infinite love card. And this is very much like being driven by your heart, this inspiration kind of energy. And it's talking about having had learned lessons in your life around um, love in every form, not just um, romantic love, but parental love and um, love in the form of the way that earth and this realm manifests it into our world and really coming to understand when you see these two hearts coming together that you are part of that whole beautiful grand force and that it's your heart that you're meant to put out here into the world and in that inspiration because it is that heart-centered passion that ignites others and ignites you. That is a part of this whole creative force that flows through you. So holy cannoli. And I'm just going to reach over here and get our charms. It's going to be loud. I'm sorry, but I just want four. One, two, three, four. Wow. I love it. Okay. So we have a moon. Now that moon does represent those feminine qualities. Um, however, uh, you know, like intuition, connection, that sort of the, the feminine, femme divine sort of energies. However, one of the things that this moon is showing is the star in the moon. And I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but there are certain times with the moon that you can see through it and see the star behind it. True story. Learn more about our world. And I feel like this is the perfect example that I've been trying to say about you guys. You are that moon. You are able to see that star behind the moon. You got that's where all this originality, this newness, this transformation energy comes in. But I also feel like the moon does represent emotions. So I feel like that does kind of reflect this this high low that I feel can happen sometimes with you. And this is a, an important part of lessons and learning in your life is this regulation of your energy flow and emotions as well. Now, we have an angel wing, and I feel like this is where you guys really are meant to fly. And I mean fly big, like really spread your wings and soar in this lifetime, because right now, it almost gives me that feeling like, you know, you, you flutter about a little bit, but you're hesitant maybe to really soar to the highest of heights. Now, this is also an angel wing. And I have to say that I feel like that represents some of these higher energies that you guys are able to tap into and draw as a resource and source from and we have the arrow and that feels to me like you guys just have to take the chance on yourself to take that shot 
because you are, your compass does point you in the right direction. You guys are aiming in the right target, in the right place. Now, I feel like this, our, our palm tree, is talking about the need for travel because one place, one area, you guys are not the people who can grow up in one little town and live there your entire lives happily. There's something about needing to see the world, needing to get into new cultures, new energy, new people, new ideas, you know, and really integrate all of that into yourselves. So the need for travel is very prominent, but there's something more important coming through with this arrow, and I don't know what it is yet. So we are just going to wait and see what comes through with the cards. And Spirit, what does group three need to know for their soul reading? What do they need to know about their origins, path, purpose? Gifted. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this card came out the last time I used this deck, I believe. This is this is backing up what I was saying there. This the, you guys are like truly gifted. Truly gifted. Recognition. Okay. I feel like that recognition card is backing up what that arrow because it is truly about like aiming your arrow and hitting the target and being seen and recognized for the work and contribution that you make, both on a professional level or path and purpose, if you want to say, but also the contribution that you are making into people's lives. Okay, so I want to go here. It's down in here. There it is. Change of mind. Okay. And just go here. Contact. <laughs> Spirit's funny. Okay. So I'm going to go up here to that gifted card because this is on the spiritual realm. Higher lessons, higher learning, um, as far as in this incarnation. And I feel like of the three groups, you guys see that you, you have this uniqueness to you. And I feel like the, the lesson or the challenge is how do I take it and turn it into something to be something out here in this world? Like, how do I actually use my gifts? And and this isn't just meaning that, but it's also saying that in the realm of spiritual learnings, teachings, and understandings is where your gift lies. So this is both symbolic and literal at the same time. And this card down here represents in the physical, in your world, what gives your feet foundation as you move through in this 3D world. And we have the recognition card. And this card, like I said, it's talking about that re being recognized for your contributions, being recognized for your gifts. So that it's the uniqueness of who you are that is celebrated. And, but I feel like another part of this message isn't that, you know, you need allocades and recognitions from other people out there, that a lot of this has to do with you, you recognizing your gifts in this lifetime and realizing that these skills, talents, abilities, and things that who you are is a gift. And it's about you coming to that greater understanding. And in that, in really seeing yourself for who and what you really are, is what gives you that stable foundation. That is the foundation that you move with more stability, it balanced, and um, I do want to say with confidence even. 
So it's interesting that the change of mind card is up here because this spot represents where you are at right now, currently in your life. And that change of mind card says there's new understandings coming through. And I feel like they're talking about not just in the area of your gifts, but how you perceive not just yourself, but how you perceive the world. And there's so much that is being revealed about our reality, our reality at this time. Um, so much new truth and understanding that is mind blowing to people of the mainstream who just cannot wrap their heads around what's really going on here. I feel like this is where you guys are in this whole expansive kind of wow energy. But with that change of mind and that greater understanding comes you, I've, the, it's got this grounding sort of feeling going on. It's very much like our crystal here because it does represent, not represent, it carries the energy of grounding, of connecting to Mother Earth. And this change of mind card gives me this kind of energy in here. This two together is actually very powerful. Um, so if that's where you're at, how are we getting you into a place where you are really being your light out here in the world, where you are really putting yourself and your truth in your to, I don't want to say it's not about finding your place in the world because it, that isn't so much the important part is finding your true expression in this world. I feel that really does pertain to you guys. Okay. You know, of all the crystals I have on the table, I have to say, I think this Moldavite and this Moldavite um, oil would more represent you guys because that Moldavite is like ancient from, from the stars, from um, comets and asteroids hitting the earth. That's where Moldavite comes from. And that's you guys up there, <laughs> I have to say. And I mean that with love and and adoration, okay, with recognition. Um, okay, and what is the bridge for group three? Mm, I'm torn between two cards. Now that's a, okay, prayers. I'm just going to put that down, and then I'm going to take this other one to medium ah. Okay, okay. okay. Okay, spirit, we hear you. I hear you, that's for sure. Okay, so normally I only pull one card and it acts like a bridge to take you from where you are into your path moving forward. And it's kind of funny that the two cards here is prayers and mediumship. And if we just translate that into one big message, this is about your intuitive connection. That's what this is about. Prayers is like calling to home, right? Mediumship is having the phone answered. That's what it's about. And um, this is very much about this innovative, creative, intuitive vibe that you guys have that this is your way through. Now, if you feel like, but I don't understand how to use my intuition and all of those things. First of all, I want to assure you that your intuition is working just fine, just fine. There's more of a sense of, with you guys, of believing in yourself and trusting it, which there's another reading, actually, soul reading, that talks about that. And I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of you guys end up choosing that second reading as a, it's a complimentary to this one, because it literally goes from changing your mind and perception and understanding to really diving into this deeper spiritual connection and gifts and making contact. 
And I feel like this contact card is talking in one way, you know, um, contacting higher energies, frequencies, and things like that. But I feel like it's where I said you guys are the originals and it's hard for people to kind of understand or relate to you. And I feel like this intuitively gives you the understanding on how to connect with people in a meaningful way so that you can bring through what it is you have to bring through. Like whatever your ideas or insights, the the inspiration that you have and how to bring it through to people in a very practical way that they connect with what you're doing. And that's whether you are doing something deeply spiritual or you could be doing music for goodness sakes, but that you, you bring through that music in a way that really connects to people in the, in that deeper level. So because it's a group reading, it's going to be different for each of you, but it is about making that connection and that contact with the world in a meaningful way. And that will give you that feeling of completion, like ah, I'm hitting that sweet spot that my soul has come here to do in this lifetime. So what kind of time are we looking at here between where you're at now and getting to that place? And I feel like, okay, what do we have here? Okay, we have 06. Okay, I feel like they're talking about within six months is from now to the six month mark is where this clarity is coming in, where you've fully integrated this higher understanding that's happening for you. But as a soul, this is a part of what you've always come here to do anyway. It's just coming into more of a complete energy. So let's get out our other deck. Now there's other things that are going on for you as a soul. And okay, spirit, what else do they need to know about their path? Group three, their lives. Okay. And I have to say there was something coming in about animals. I don't know. Um, it won't resonate for all of you, but if, if any of you, um, work with animals or feel drawn to in any capacity, whether it's, you know, whatever capacity, I really want to encourage you to do that. Um, for those of you who understand that and resonate with it. And I feel like, no, I'm going to go here. Okay. My goodness. It's sticking together. And we have expression. Oh, okay. That makes complete sense. So I'm just going to grab our, where is it? Our six? There it is. Okay. So we've got our six energy back. Now, that's interesting that the expression came out here. Um, I have to show you. Stu had sent me this in the package with the two crystals to share with you guys. And like he intuitively picked it out for me. And I feel like you guys are going to relate to this because I do, you know, um, have my stuff about expressing and sharing. And I'm always working at allowing myself out here a little more. And I feel like this so connects into your guys' reading, especially where you have the um, frequency. This is lapis, by the way, which it very much is third eye and throat chakra um, uh, crystal. So that's what I was, this is what I was trying to say about through this change of mind and this connection and really coming into that place where you can convey your ideas in a way that people understand. Because I don't feel with you guys that for most of you, it's not um, fears are holding you back or anything like that. It's maybe a lack of understanding, change of mind, on how to really connect these um, higher energy ideas, thoughts, 
perceptions that you have, how to convey them and communicate them in a way that connects to people. But I also feel like this is another clue or sign that's coming with spirit because we have the intimacy card, because this does have that kind of, when you are that unique sort of soul, it's like, how do you connect to other people? Like there's that challenge with you guys. And I feel like spirit is saying these are, that's one of those areas that as a soul that you really have been challenged with. Like, how do I build meaningful relationships? How do I build this deep, intimate connection with other people? And I feel like even though those lessons are difficult at times, what Spirit is saying is this is one of those places that through those challenges, you end up in mastery of. And I do feel that because we have both the intimacy and the contact, making contact through your path and purpose, and then personally making that contact on a beautiful, intimate level with other souls. Okay, so we have another set of cards here. And I'm just, what else do they need to know? Group three spirit. And I'm going in here somewhere. There it is. And we have the Ace of Feathers. Oh, okay, I'm excited because that kind of is backing up what everything I've been saying. And I love it when Spirit is making a show of it. I need to go way, way up here, don't I, guys? Right. I think maybe this one is it. And we have the Nine of Crystals. Okay. So with this Ace of Feathers, um, the reason I'm laughing is because this goat, it represents, see it says mental clarity, which we have the change of mind card and I was saying that clarity is coming, but this is almost like, this, this um, Ace of Feathers is like Ace of Swords and there's something about this um, higher perception like it's like having your head in the clouds, but like you're, you move past the clouds to get this really clear, higher vision that everyone else down below, down there, they don't get to see that. They don't. And you get this beautiful perception, beautiful clarity and understanding everything that we've been talking about here. And then it says that through that, that you're able to create a new foundation that gives you the stability that we were talking about that you need to kind of counter these big waves and that that foundation goes right into this which is security and abundance because nine of crystals is the same as nine of pentacles okay so this is all about security it's about taking the time to like o or over time let's put it that way because we are talking over time that you learn what it is you need what truly brings you that sense of security and working at building that so you have a place within your life where you can really relax and let down your guard but in that it's talking about the security of a home it's talking about your home base, right? Building that home base. And abundance comes in here with that. So I feel like spirit is kind of hitting every area of your life that they're talking about here. So there will be lots of learning lessons and understanding about how, how you can create that for yourself. It is a part of your destiny to have that. Let me be clear. So I want to get out our dice. And these are astrological dice. And I want to see what kind of uh, astrological influences or energies. So we have, we have North Node. Okay. We have the North Node and we have Cancer. All right. So six and nine energy here and North Node. So North Node represents 
our destiny, where we are heading. It's like what our soul has come here to do. And sometimes we have trouble stepping into our North Node because that's the new ground. But it's saying that you're here to take all of this concepts and things that maybe other people struggle with or that seem outdated or antiquated and to bring them up into a new way of communicating in them and bringing them to the world. And that is a huge part of your destiny. So with the North Node showing up here, it's saying that you will fulfill that. You aren't just going to live your life struggling to figure out your gifts. You will get it. You will live it. You will be it. And you will be recognized for it. Wow. And then we have Cancer, which again, Cancer falls into, it's ruled by the moon. It is very much, it does have feminine qualities of intuition, which is very much in this reading, but it's also nurturing the home. And Cancer tends to make a retreat when they don't feel good or safe out in the world. And this is that place for you, not just to retreat, right? Because we're getting into smaller waves, but a place for you to be your base, your home camp. Like I was saying that you have the security that you need, that safe place to be in your life. Now we have one more thing that I want to dig out. And this is our, our bag of quotes. And I'm just trying to shake them up here. I'm bending it. Darn it. Okay. Let's, let's see what we have. Okay. Mistakes are a fact of life. It is the response to the error that counts. <laughs> okay, so I feel like with that one, Spirit is saying, don't be so hard on yourself, you guys, right? It's through trial and error. That's where we really learn the best. And that's what this is talking about. You guys have done huge learning through coming up, come down, coming up, come down. And it's not about being perfect. It's about you being you, right? So that is quite beautiful. Now, I hope you liked your reading. If you did, please do sprinkle some love on the reading. And if you would like to get some of this amazing oil or any of the crystals that you've seen here today, please go visit Stu, support what he's doing. It's just so beautiful and amazing. The links are in the comments and in the description and use the code. If you use that code, it, it helps to support my channel, which I truly appreciate. Anyway, if you are not subscribed, you better subscribe because I always have some amazing readings coming up and you never know what I'm going to be doing next. I'm just, I'm a little bit zany, just like you guys. And um, as you know, you know I love you. I cannot wait to see you again next week. Take care. Sunlight, sunlight, is it in the way you're moving? What's heaven like when you're like that?